Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. People believe what they see. People emulate what they see. People become what they see and emulate. Television, then, is the greatest mass reality creation tool ever devised. I returned to the US in 2021, after living abroad for 20 years. I noticed how everyone was talking more quickly than I was accustomed to. They also were using different intonation, many of them raising their voice at the end of a sentence, as if asking a question. It's not how I talked. I was still in slow 1990s mode. How did this change come about? Through TV shows. This is how Americans were taught to talk. People emulate what's on TV. They want to be like the stars on TV. Since I don't talk that way, do I alienate younger people? Maybe. I've been told, I don't watch your videos because you talk too slow. There are a lot of phrases, mannerisms, and words that I've seen arise on TV, then spill over into real life. In old ads on hypnotism, it was common to say the hypnotist could use any TV set to put you into a state of trance. A lot of people would agree that there's brainwashing on TV, that TV is hypnotic etc. But, have you ever considered that this is the reason TV was invented? Have you ever considered that it was never meant to be a vehicle of entertainment, information and convenience, but was specifically planned as a mass indoctrination tool, and is still being used as such, today? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The entire NASA scam, one of the biggest of our time, relies on you believing what you see on TV. If you go by what you see with your naked eye, there is little proof that NASA's space program is anything other than a hoax. This video is half an hour long, but well worth it, if you still believe, through decades of TV brainwashing, that NASA is a legitimate company. The video contains three very strong pieces of evidence that cast doubt on the reality of the International Space Station. One, one person adhering to time delay on a call with Earth, while the other person is reacting in real time. Two, astronauts being supplied with jerseys of the Super Bowl winner without a rocket having gone up during that time. Three, evidence of astronauts wearing harnesses and operating on green screen. NASA owns one of the largest film studios. The people that work there should be thought of not as scientists, but professional actors. Without TV, their magic falls apart. Most people think of black magic as something to do with pentagrams and spells in dimly lit caverns. I think of black magic foremost as clandestine mass reality creation, through colors, sounds and words. Media or mediums are not only casting spells, they are broadcasting them. And I'm the person who would know how reality creation works, having taught the same for 35 years. When ancient sages referred to our world as an illusion, they meant it. Everything you see on screen is potentially illusory. What you see in your environment around you is comparatively more real. And if most of your beliefs and behaviors are rooted in what you saw on a screen, then your life has been created by someone else. This video is another very long one, an entire documentary in fact. I don't expect you to watch it, so I summarize its contents. It's about how the biggest Southern European pop star of the 1980s couldn't sing. He was just lip sensing. The guy who really sang the songs, and the guy who lip synced them, but did all the live touring, are now publicly arguing over who deserves the credit. Why am I sharing this? Because I know from first-hand experience, that, a, it's still being done, b, it's more common than you're told, and, c, the music industry is another illusion that awaits replacement by something more authentic. By now we've seen that NASA's space program is an illusion, and the music industry is also an illusion. How is it possible to deceive so many people? It's so easy. People believe what they see. 
the singer couldn't even speak English properly. His American English was fluent while he sang, but broken in interviews. His producers always cut interviews short and said he's a shy person who doesn't like to give interviews. But most people did not notice and did not question. In most people, seeing is more strongly developed than listening. They pulled off the scam for an entire decade. This is real magic. People are made to believe that these are musicians, but they are actors. Just a handful of people influence millions. I'm in awe of their power, but it's also evil, that's why I call it black magic. It's evil, because it blankets the whole world in inauthenticity. Phil Farnsworth, the alleged inventor of television, was said to have forbidden his own children to watch TV. Thanks to the mass media magicians, we can't be sure of anything except our own direct experience. George Orwell said in his book 1984 that we live in an age of universal deceit. He wasn't joking. Talking heads on TV like to begin their sentences with, we know that. People who talk with that kind of self-assuredness are usually morons. We don't really know all that much. We assume. We guess. But anything you see on your screen should be taken with a grain of salt, even the stuff you enthusiastically agree with. The first nuclear test carried out by the US on Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands in July 1946 was called Babel. The second nuclear test was called Baker, detonated 24 days later. The problem? The palm trees, hut and deck on both photos look exactly the same. They might as well be the same photos with different explosions superimposed. And even if these photos were real, the palm trees hut and deck just a few miles from the explosion should have been destroyed, buried, flooded, or disappeared by the tsunami caused by any explosion of that magnitude. The sailors in this image are shown a few miles away from the detonation of Banker. They're not wearing goggles or radiation suits. I took these images from an article on yahoo.news, but they are also available elsewhere. Again, we are told that this is what happened. We see on TV that this is what happened. But, were you actually there to witness these nuclear explosions? Do you know anyone who was there to witness? Do you know the person who dropped the bombs? No. Then you'll just have to trust that the TV is telling you the truth. Is it too much ask to have some things be genuine? What's wrong with having a good-looking and entertaining singer who can really sing? Such a person does exist. It's like, these magicians behind the curtains have elevated deception to an art form, like the goal was never science, music or film, but simply deceiving as many people as possible. You could argue that stuff on screen is supposed to be entertainment. That reality is boring, and we should be grateful to have some distraction. I'm not denying that. I've watched hundreds of good shows on screen, or that I've learned a lot on YouTube. Internet democratized the brainwashing. But the internet is not as free and democratic as many thought. The programming is still tightly controlled. Netflix for example, only allows a certain narrow spectrum of ideas. So-called reality TV isn't. It's all scripted. Even political dramas are scripted. Or did you really believe someone as transparently unlikable and crooked as Cloud Wob is anything but an actor? Eat bugs. You will own nothing and be happy. You are useless eaters. Really. That's how a scripted caricature, a cartoon villain talks, not a real person. What would total freedom of information look like? We don't know. We've been under a cloud of oblivion ever since the invention of mass media. The real challenge of the future is to de-illusionize our world, to experience something more authentic. What's more authentic? Go live in a cabin in the woods. I'm not going that far. Maybe I'll start by asking my congressperson why my tax money is being used to fund NASA. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button.